So welcome to this tutorial again. You are still on Best Science Brand YouTube channel. Today we're going to have a physics content. We thank our subscribers, we appreciate you all. And if you're a new viewer or you are new to the channel, please subscribe by tapping on the subscription bell. Reading above, that is find the subscription bell, the tiny bell under the channel's name, under the profile picture, you see a tiny bell, then tap on it once and then subscribe. So I'll be seeing our videos from time to time. So we are done the video on moment of force, we are still making this. But today we are trying to, we are going to look at, uh, we are going to solve past questions. We are going to solve, solve past questions on moment of a force involving a single pivot system. Then for today that I in SS2, SS3, or Boris 2, and not for those in general, they are general physics in year one of high institution. So, we are now going to look at this question. So, the question we take to the jump question on the board and come up with the SS2 question. Why some questions will take more? So, should be question crafted for high institution, first semester, or first semester courses, or matrix. So, here we go to the board now. So the first question the board says uh, we have a force diagram there. We see a meter root P T by voted at a point R. We have two ways 0.1 Newton and 0.4 Newton hanging on Q and S respectively. So let's go to the question. It says that P T is a uniform meter rule, as you can see, PT is a meter rule. We voted at R, where I have the balance point, the 70 cm mark. That means R is the 70 cm mark. No time here. So, two forces, 0.1 and 0.4 Newton, are applied at Q, the 60 cm mark. So, that means this point is the 60 cm mark. The Q and X, the 85 cm mark. So the point S is the 85 cm mark. If the metal root is kept in equilibrium by the forces and its weight, find the weight. We go again for well, this and faster. PT is a uniform metal root pivoted at R, the 70 cm mark. Two forces, 0.1 Newton and 0.4 Newton, are applied at Q, the 60 cm, and S, the 85 cm mark. If the meter root is kept in A, driven by the forces and its weight, find the weight. So we'll go, to the, we'll go to the right side of the board and solve this problem. To solve this problem, we need to re sketch the diagram. P T. Then, as I itemized before, there are certain things you have to do when you have a, a problem of moment or of this kind. The first thing you have to do is locate the center of gravity. Since we are told that the object is the uniform meter rule, and I told you for a uniform body, the center of gravity is at the midpoint. Every meter rule is 100 cm. So the center of gravity of a meter rule should be at 50, which is a uniform meter rule. But if it's half meter rule, half meter rule, the center of gravity will be at 25. So this is a full meter rule. So and it's at this point that the weight we add, the weight of meter rule, so at 50. And the pivot is lying at, from the equation, if you look at the diagram, the pivot is at the point at which is 70. So the pivot, if I voted or balance at 70, to so have it there. So people is lying after the center of gravity. Then we now locate the other weights. The weight S is on the 85 cm mark. So we now 85 should come beyond 70. 0 0.4 Newton at the 85 cm mark. So that is where you have S. The other weight there, we have weight um, 0 0.1 at the 60, that 60 is Q. And 60 should lie between 50 and 70. 
to have a weight of 0 0.1 Newton at this point. So having located the whole weight and drawn the complete fault diagram, the next thing we we'll do is we we'll take the perpendicular distance between the five volts and each of the weights. So the distance from here to this point, how to get it? It will be 85 minus 70, that will give us 15. This time from this to this weight will be 10, 70 minus 6, that give us 10. This time from this other weight to the pivot will now be 70 minus 50, that give us 20. So we find the distance or perpendicular distance between each weight and the pivot. Each weight and the pivot. All distances which measure to the pivot. Having done that, let's assume that we rotate the meter, the meter root in this direction. Let's take this direction as a clockwise direction. If the weights here move in this direction, then this weight move upwards. It may become anti-clockwise. So we're going to take a moment now. So we're going to take a clockwise moment. Clockwise moment. Remember that moment is force times perpendicular distance. So the force here is W. Multiply by 20 in distance to the pivot, that gives us 20W. Plus, the force here is 0 0.1. Multiply this by 10, that's the distance to the pivot, that is 0 0.1 times 10. We now have 20W. Why W represent the weight? Plus 1. So this is our clockwise moment expression. They will now go to anti clockwise moment. For anti-clockwise moment, we see repeat the same thing. We look at the force on the other side. There's only one force on this side, 0 0.4. And if this time to the pivot is 15, now I have 0 0.4 times 15. When we do that, we're going to get 6. So having done that, we move over and say, take the principal moment. Let's go back to this side. The principal moment that says clockwise moment is equal to anti-clockwise moment. So that is 20W plus 1 equal to 6. When I have 20W plus 1, we give us 6. We collect light terms. 20W becomes 6 minus 1, giving us 5. W now becomes 5 over 20, which is 1 quarter, or 0 0.25 Newton. So this is the weight of the meter rule. So let's go to the options and look at the correct answer. The option, the correct answer there is option A. So this question is drafted from UTME, University uh, or Teacher Institution Examination, 1984. So we look at our work and then go through it. So we'll go to number two question on the board here. You can see under four diagram, we have a rod, a emitter root QR from 0 n to 100 cm n. Q, QR. Then it says, let's go to the question. The uniform meter root QR is balanced on a knife edge, which is 35 cm from R. When you form that rule, QR is balanced on a knife edge. Let's look at the equation, the diagram again. It says it's balanced on a knife, but we're not seeing any, any knife edge because the knife edge normally is shown by a, a triangular symbol. So there's no knife edge here. We're going to draw it later. So that whenever you're doing an equation on moment, the diagram is never complete. You're going to do, make some, you're going to complete it. You're going to do, make some construction. So, to complete the diagram, because it can't be complete as long as it. So, if you look at this diagram, there are no knife edge represented here. So, that means we're going to represent a knife edge. So, let's go back to the question. It's balanced on a knife edge, which is 35 cm from R. 35 cm from R. Okay. When a mass of 10 grams is hung at P, where is P? P is the is, is the 10 cm mark. The mass of the meter root is, so let's go to the, 
diagram once more. We are told in the question that the beta root is balanced at, on a nice edge, which is that here from R. So let's draw the beta root once more. Q R. When you draw a false diagram for a moment, the first thing you have to do is to find the center of gravity of the material, uniform, uniform material. Since the beta root, the center of gravity will be at 50. And that is where the mass we are, or the weight we are. And we are told that the meter root is balanced on a nice edge, which is 55 cm from R. Where is R? R is the S string here. So it's balanced on the nice edge, which is 55 cm from R. That means the nice edge will be at a point which is 45 cm. Remember that he says balance the distance from R from the 9th age to R is 55 cm. So how do we know where the 9th age is? You subtract 55 from 100. See the full length of the meter is 100. So 100 minus 55 gives us 45. That means the 9th age is at 45 cm. How do you mean that we are told that the 9th age is at 55 cm from Q? That because Q is the zero end. That means here we have 55. But since they are told that the ninth page is 55 cm from R, we have to subtract uh, 55 from 100 and know that ninth page should be at the 45 cm mark. So let's go back to the diagram again. We have a mass here, 10 gram, hanging at the point P. And that point P is 10 cm from, the, from, from uh, Q. So remember that the QN is the zero end of the data loop. So the mass here being P. Here is a mass of 10 gram. So if from this point origin to here is 10 cm, that means this point is also 10 cm, but this place is zero. So here will be 10 cm. So what we'll do, since we have placed or look at the masses, we find the distance between each mass or each force and the pivot for the moment. This are from here to this point should be 35, that is 45 minus 10. This are from this point to here should be 45, that is 50 minus 45. Take a moment, take a place as clockwise and the force here as anticlockwise. On a clockwise moment, we now become 35 times 10, that is the force acting down there times the vertical distance. The anticlockwise moment will now become equal to M. The mass there times 5, that is the distance there. So we wait a moment, 350, that gives us clockwise equal to 5m, which is anti clockwise. m that becomes 350 over 5, you know, 70 gram. So the mass for the meter root is 70 gram. Let's go to the options. So the answer to the equation is option C, 70 gram, UTME 1986. So you can take a look at our work as we go to other questions. Problem on the board. We have a false diagram. We have a uniform object here, K, Q. We have the, the knife H have a force of 1,000 Newton acting down there, acting at a distance of 6 meters from the knife edge or from the pivot. We have another force there, P. That P is acting at a distance of 12 meters from the pivot. So they go to the question. They say, calculate the force that must be, played, but that must be attached at the end K. The end K is this point. And that force, of course, is this P, as it acting at the end K. So we're looking for P. Calculate the force that will be attached at the end K for the bar above to be at equilibrium. So this is unified stationary My stationary examination 2017. So it's an examination for high institution for students who are who want to enter high institution. So let's look at the problem again. Now look at this. First, this very easy. Everything we need has been given to us. So we have two forces acting on this beam, 1,000 Newton, and then this one acting there. So to solve the problem, we may need to resketch, get a little square down. We don't need everything there. 
this is a pivot, they will have a force P acting 12 meters from the pivot. And then we we'll have another force 1000 newton acting at a distance of 6 meters from the pivot. Every other thing given there is no longer necessary. So, every other thing given up there is no longer necessary. But what we need, we need this. We need this. These distances, no other forces are going to be put. To go down to summit, then look at this. We can take this movement as clockwise and take this place as anti clockwise. So, the going to clockwise moment, clockwise becomes the force here P times 12, giving us 12P. Then, anti clockwise moment or movement. Now be the force beyond the pivot, and the distance measured to the pivot, which is six times the you know six thousand newton meter. So the pressure moment, we say that clockwise moment must be equal to anti-clockwise moment. When I make it a subject, it now become six thousand divided by twelve. When we do this, we're going to get five hundred newton. So the force required at the point P. To keep this system at equilibrium is 500 newton. So going to the options, we have A, option B is the right answer, 500 newton to that question from UTME 2017. So you can go through our work as we prepare for the next question. So we'll go to the next question, question, question number four. Since a meter rule is devoted at a mid, at its midpoint with a particle force of 10 newton hanging from okay, let's get a sketch first. A meter rule which is devoted at its midpoint. So a meter, a meter the midpoint is at 50. So the pivot is at that center of gravity. Then as you name for meter rule. So the pivot is lying at 50. And whenever the pivot lies at the center of gravity, please ignore the effect of the weight of the meter rule. I come again. When the meter rule is balanced at its center of gravity or at its midpoint, ignore its weight. The weight is no longer used in the calculation. The weight will have no effect. So let's go back to the equation. The meter rule is devoted at its midpoint with a vertical force of 10 meter hanging from hanging from the distance of 30 cm for the midpoint. So that the force of 30 cm hanging, the force of 10 newton hanging 30 cm from the midpoint. Okay, let's assume that from here to this point is 30 cm and that the force of 10 newton hanging here. So if from this distance is 30 cm, that means the force be hanging on the 20 cm mark because the zero and here is zero. And this point should be 20 for here to be 30. For 30 plus 20 gives you 50. So let's go back to the question. At what distance, at what distance must a 15 newton force hang to balance the rule horizontally? So they're asking us where we're going to hang a 15 newton force so that we can balance, balance the meter root. Now, if you go back to the diagram, a force is already hanging here. That is, the meter root will tilt toward the direction because of its force. The 15 newton force will be hung on the other side of the meter root so that it will come up or balance horizontally. We are looking at this at what point are we going to hang, at what distance are we going to hang this 15 newton force. So let's assume the distance between the 15 newton force and the pivot in X. Let it be the perimeter distance. So let's take a moment. Let's take this one as clockwise. This is another place as anti clockwise. So for clockwise moment, we now have this force times the particular distance, which is 30, that gives us 300 newton centimeter. For anti clockwise moment, we use the force on the right side, which is 15, multiply the distance to the pivot, which is the distance, which is 15 times. Taking the pressure moment, which says clockwise moment is equal to anti clockwise moment. When I say S becomes 300 over 50, that will give us 20 centimeter. So the force will hang, the force will hang 20 centimeter from 
effective T for the mid point. Let's go and actually the value here will be will be 70, that is 20 plus 50, which will give us 70. That will be the value here. So let's go to the options and look for the answer. That is option A, B is option C, 20 CM for the midpoint. So this is UTME exam 2016. So go through our solution and then understand the concept for what the next question. So go back to number five. That says we are still on past patients, principles of moment, make needs, revising questions from past paper examination bodies. A, a 90 cm uniform lever, lever is a simple machine, has a load. So let's first of all draw the line. This is like present the lever. And the lever is 90 cm, that means 0 to 90. So it's uh, being uniform. First of all, we we'll find the center of gravity, which should be at the 45 cm mark. And it's at this center that the weight of the labor we add or the mass we add. Let's continue the question. Has a load of 30 newton suspended at the 15 cm mark. Has a load of 30 newton at the 15 cm mark. We we'll go back to the diagram. A load of 30 newton for the 15 cm mark. So here is 0. 15 should be closer to 0 than 45. So let's call here 15. A load of 30 newton is acting downwards here. Okay, let's go back to the question. If the fulcrum is at the center of gravity, if the fulcrum is at the center of gravity, that means fulcrum is the pivot, and number of pivot is fulcrum. We want to go back to the diagram. That means the pivot is at the center, that is the center of gravity, C of G, 45. Remove this weight and put the pivot. And as I said in the previous question, when the fulcrum is at the center of gravity, the effect of the weight is neglected. We don't use the weight to get the calculation. So we remove the weight. Then we ask the force that must be applied at each other end to keep it in equilibrium is the force that must be, up, must be applied at each other end to keep it in horizontal equilibrium. Other end. Which end are we talking about? You know this end, that is this end. At the other end. So then we have a force. So let's say a particle force F. So which force are we going to apply here to keep it at equilibrium? So we have two forces here, the 30 newton force, and then the force that we want to find. The weight is neglected because the pivot is at the center of gravity. Now find the distance between the each force and the pivot. So from this point to here is 30. How do we get it? 45 minus 15. And from this point to the end is 45 because the middle root is 90. So 90 minus 45 gives you 45. So let's take this movement as clockwise, then this other one as anti-clockwise. So clockwise moment will now become force times so this is force, unknown force, times the distance measured to which is 45, you know, 45 F. Anti-clockwise moment, which is also four that times this time will become the force down the attack. And the distance will be time start again. That will give us 900. So taking the principal moment, we say it's clockwise for the equal and clockwise. We weigh them for 5f equal to 900. F becomes 900 over 45. And that gives us 20 newton force that should apply at the end to keep it at equilibrium. The answer to equation number 5 is B, 20 newton. And that is UTMB 2009. We now go to the next question. We will go through our work as we prepare for the next question. So, next question, which is number six on the board, says a uniform meter rule weighing. 0.5 newton. A meter away is 0.5 newton. So let us sketch the rule. So the uniform, that means the center of gravity must be at 50 being a meter away. We 
weighing super paddling is the weight is acting downwards. Put the weight here, 0 0.5 meter. Weighing 0 0.5 meter. It's devoted on the 9 inch at the, at the 30 cm mark. So the pivot is at 30 cm mark, and 30 cm must be before 50. At the same mark. And they say, where we enforce of two newton the place from the people to balance the meter load. We are we a force of two newton the place from the people to balance the meter load. So since we have a force here, the way it's having this way, the force of two newton should be placed on the other side for the people to balance it. So it should be on this on the left hand side. So let's say we have the force of two newton here. The distance of between this force and the people, let's call it x. So the distance between the weight and the people is now 20, that is 50 minus 30. Then let's move on. Here is 2 newton. Let's call this movement clockwise and call this anti-clockwise. So clockwise moment, which is force times the standard time, that is 2 times x minus 2 x. Anti-clockwise moment will now become also the same force time this time that is 0 0.5 distance to the people which is 20. Remember it's regular distance to the people and that will give us 10. So having done that, we will now equate moment which is clockwise moment equal to anti-clockwise moment. That is 2s is equal to 10. Equating moment and moments together that s becomes 10 over 2, which is 5 cm. The question is, we are not asked to find the distance. Now the question ask, asks us, where will this force be placed? We are looking for the point, this point P. Where will this force of two be placed? They didn't ask to find the distance between the force and the pivot. Rather, we are asked, where will the force be placed? We are going to S, every present distance between the force and the pivot. Then that means this P will now become. 30 minus s. The value of p here will be 30 minus s, which is going to be 30 minus 5 minus 35 cm. That means the body will be located at the 35 cm mark of the meter room. So let's go to the question and pick our answer. Let's look at the option. We are seeing 25 here. B. We are also seeing 5. This is a contradictory and contrasting answers. 25 and uh, 5. So the answer is 5. But the question asks us where will the object be placed? It didn't ask us at what distance for the people to be placed. Rather, where will the object be placed? Object be placed. So the answer is the 25 cm mark. So this is UTMP 1998. So go through our question as we prepare for the next problem. Our solution as we prepare the next for the next problem. On the board number seven that says uniform rod PQ of length one meter and mass two kg is pivoted at the end P. If a load of 14 newton is placed at the center of the rod, find the force that should be applied vertically upwards at Q to maintain the rod in. Equilibrium. UTMP 1995. So let's go back to the question again so I can be able to get the right diagram for the equation. The right four diagram. Uniform rod PQ. So we sketch the horizontal line. And then the line represents the rod PQ. It's a uniform body of length one meter. The length of the rod is one meter. And that means it's 130 meters, maybe the value bigger. And then the center of gravity is going to be at 50 because it's a uniform object. And at this center, the weight or the mass of the rod will act. So let's continue. And mass 2 kg. So say the mass is 2 kg, we place the mass at the center of gravity, 2 kg. It's pivoted at the end P. So that the pivot or a pivot at the end P. Pivot here at the end P. Okay? If a 
a load of 14 into its place at the center of the rod. If a load of 14 newton is placed at the center of the rod, so that means we have a load of 14 newton also here. So the total load here will be 2 plus 14 newton, that is the total load at the center of the rod. But this is not, the units are not uniform. We have to convert this mass to, to weight. Noting that weight is mass times acceleration due to gravity. So that will be. 2, the value of g is 10, that gives us 20 newton. That we call the weight of the rod. So since the weight is 20, we now add 20 to 14. So total weight here is going to be 34 newton at the center of the rod. Okay. If find the force, find the force that should be applied vertically upwards at q to maintain the rod at a what force? I go to apply where is Q, Q is the other end, vertically upwards. What force we're going to apply here so the rod be at equilibrium? So, having done that, the first thing we have to do is to organize the position of the pivot. And there are two forces here 34 Newton and F, unknown force. Find the distance between each force and the pivot. So, this pivot at the extreme. So, from here, this pivot to the but for the term force is 50, because this 50 here is 0, 50 minus 0 gives us 50. 50. Now, the distance from this other force at the S chain to the pivot is 100, because that's the full length of the rod. We we'll now take moment. We take a moment, then take the force here as clockwise moment, and take the one down as at clockwise. Every moment is taking the pivot. So clockwise now becomes F. Times one that is the force multiplied by the multiply by the distance to the pivot equal to anti-clockwise 34 times 34 times 50. That is the force multiplied to the uh, multiplied by the distance to the east to the pivot. So the distance will measure the pivot in all cases. So our force now becomes 34 times 50 over 100, and that will give us 17. So the answer to the equation is option C, 17 Newton, to this UTM year 1995. So go through our work as we move to the next equation. So go to number 8 question. Number 8, we are seeing a pole diagram here. A pivot at the end. Of that wood, well, the weight of the wood 200 newton, and we see a cord, C O R D, tied at the other extreme, making an angle 30 degree to the horizontal. So this is cord or string. So let's look at the question. They say the diagram above shows a uniform wood of length 50 meter. So let's get a sketch again. Is the uniform wood and the length of the wood is 50 meters. That means the center of gravity is going to be at the 25 c 25 meter. So that's where the weight we add. So 25 meters is where the weight is going to be. Since the uniform wood length 50, center of gravity will be half of it. That's 25. Let's go back to the equation. And weight 200 newton. So the weight of the wood is 200 newton. The weight is going to be at the center of gravity. Calculate the tension in the cord. That the cord at the extreme here, the rope making a go 30 degree to the horizontal. Then they say find the tension in the cord. The force that exists on the rope is called tension. And if you look at the diagram, there's a pivot at the other end of the wood. So what do we do? We see that the, the weight is a force acting perpendicular. The wood 90 degrees. So the distance between the, the pivot and the weight is, of course, 25. Because it has to be the zero end. So the final zero is going to be equal to 25. That's one of the force organized. And that force, what we see used is, is go to the tension to the rope. This force is not the angle here is not 90 degrees. So we cannot use this force to find one. We want to find moment, we'll use a force that acts at 90 degrees, right angle, perpendicular to the 
object. So since this tension is not a right angle, we will create an imaginary force. The particle force, they call it F, which is perpendicular to the wood, and find this force for that of the tension. So the distance from this extreme to the wood is 50, that is the full length of the wood. So if we should move this rod this way, this becomes our clockwise moment. So clockwise moment will now become that force L and the distance measured to be 50 times 50, uh, F times 50 that gives us 50 L. Then anti-clockwise, look at this force down there, that's the weight of the wood. Anti-clockwise now becomes the weight which the force will cause and the distance measured to be wood is 50 L. So now the weight moment will now be 50 L clockwise gives us the anti-clockwise. F becomes 200 times 25 over 50. Let me put the formula for that. What we we'll talk is going to be 100 newton. But we are not looking for this force. The question says we could find a tension in the wood. So let's go back to our diagram here. We'll complete this into a, a triangle. The angle here is 30. The angle here is going to be 30 by virtue of alternate angle. So let's bring the triangle down here. There is 30, there is 30 also. Then the force F, which was the vertical force, which we obtain is 100 Newton. And we are asked to look for the tension on the rope. That is T here. Tension on the rope. So now this is the right angle triangle. Remember our trig ratio. This is the opposite. 100 Newton is the opposite to the angle, while the tension is the hypotenuse. So we apply opposite over hypotenuse, that gives us sine, sine 30. So when we make T the subject, T becomes 100 over sine 30. Sine 30 is 0 0.5. Divide, we get back 200 Newton. So the tension on the wood, on the rope, is 200 Newton. So let's go to the options. Number 8, the right answer is option D, 200 Newton, 1994. UTME examination. So you can go through our walking as we prepare for the next question. Go to number nine question, which you have on the board here. That says MN, the MN is a light uniform meter rule. Being light, the word light here means we should neglect the effect of the weight. So we don't know we are going to use the weight for the calculation because question says that the material is light. So the weight has a negligible effect. So pivoted at O. Look at the pivot at O, and O is the ATCM mark. A load of mass 3 kg is kept in a group by a string RP. Look at the string RP. Okay, piece at the string is piece at P, and then attach the wood at R, the 20 cm mark. So the tension in the string is to have a we have a force diagram. This is a light wood, a light meter root MN. We have a load of 3 kg hanging on the 10 cm mark, which is the point L. We have the pivot at the 80 cm mark. We have a rope tied at the 20 cm mark. And we have to find the tension in the, on the rope. This is more like the other question we saw, but it's somehow harder or more complex. So we're going to look at the diagram once more. This is our MN. We have a load at the 10 cm mark. And that load is a load of 3 kg. We convert it to Newton, 30 Newton, because we are looking for force, so everything should be in Newton. Remember that how we get it, weight is mass times, so the mass is 3 kg times 10, you know, 30 Newton. So let's go back to the diagram. The 3 kg is from the 30 Newton. We have a rope. The rope is, is tied 
died at the 20 cm mark. So here is 20, and the angle to the horizontal is 30 degree, as you can see there. Then we have a pivot at the 80 cm mark. We we'll go back to our new diagram and put a pivot. Pivot is at the 80 cm mark. They were asked to find the tension, the force on the rope. To do this, we organize the forces here. We ignore the weight, the, the weight of the group, the uniform group, but we don't use the weight because they say the light wood. So since it's light, so they got the weight or the weight neglected. What we now do is this is a force. We find the distance. We do the distance measure at 90 degrees to the pivot. And that distance should be nothing but should not be 70. 80 minus 10, that gives you 70 cm. So which other force are we going to use? At the point where you have the rope tied, we cannot find the, the distance from the rope, yes, to the pivot is 60. How did I get 60? 80 minus 20, that gives us 60. But the force we're going to use to find the moment here will not be the tension, but the tension is not perpendicular to the wood. It's not making angle 90 to the wood. So we're going to create an imaginary force, which we can call F, which lies perpendicular about 90 degrees to the root. We'll find this force for talking about the tension. So let's rotate about the pivot. Let's call this movement clockwise and call this other movement anti-clockwise. So the clockwise moment will now have the force unknown and the distance 60 measure the pivot that is for given us 60 F. For the anti-clockwise moment, we have the force which is a 30 down here and the distance measured to the pivot which is 70. All distances in moment problems for the measure the pivot. So, we now have 2100. We now have the weight moment, clockwise moment is equal to anti-clockwise moment. Make L equal to L becomes 2100 over 50. When we divide this, we're going to have 2100 divided by 50 will give us 35 Newton. So the force up there, the imaginary force there is 35 Newton. But we look for the tension. We go back to the triangle, I mean to the diagram, and then cover these two. Get the triangular shape. The right angle is 90 degrees. And the angle here should be 30 by virtue of alternate angle. So let's put the triangle down here and then look at what we have. Okay? Here is 30 as we have it on that four diagram. Here is also 30. There is the tension which you are looking for. The vertical force, look at it up. F is what we obtain at 35 Newton. Right, 35 Newton should be here. We're not looking for C. So for this, this is the angle 90, this is the opposite, this is the hypotenuse. And I say opposite 35 over hypotenuse will give us sine 30. To make C the subject, C becomes 35 over sine 30. So it's going to be 35 over 0 0.5. C becomes 70 Newton. So that the tension on the on the strain. So let's go to the options and then check the answers here. We look at option A, 3.5, option option B, okay, option A, 3.0, B, 3.4, C, 3.5, Newton D, 6.0, E, 7.0. No answer is correct in this examination, 1985, UTMB. The correct answer is 17 Newton, so there should be an error. 7.0 is different, so the correct answer is 7.0. Would well, have been 7.0 if this is 3 Newton. If the mass here was to be 3 Newton, that's would have been 7.0. But for, for the part the mass is in kg, if you convert, the right answer is 17 Newton. But this is the nearest answer. So that should be an error for the end. So 1985. 17 Newton. So go through our work as we move to the last question for today's tutorial of physics content.
last question for today. Number 10 says, we have a diagram here. They say, what is the difference between the moment of the 10 Newton force about the points B and C? 10 Newton force, the difference between the moment of the 10 Newton about the point B and about the point C. So, how do we solve this problem? I'm going to draw a diagram up here. A, B, C. 10 Newton force. And of course, the sort of material, let's say here is 20 centimeter. Here is 20 cm. Sorry, here is 20 cm. And here is 20 cm. Okay, at the right direction. So we are asked to find the difference between the moment of this force about the point B and about the point C. So what do we do? We see that this force is not directed towards either B. That is, yeah, this force is perpendicular to C, but it's not perpendicular to B. Because when you want to have a moment, moment has to be with force times the perpendicular distance. This is a measure at right angle. So what am I going to do? What I'll do is this, I'll create the imaginary force, a reaction force acting upwards. So this force is also 10 meters, it's acting in the opposite direction based on the torque's law of motion that for every action that an equal and opposite reaction. So we create a reaction force opposite and this should be equal in magnitude. Then we now draw a horizontal line to get the breaker distance between this and this point B. So when we are done that, we're going to find this distance, let's call that this distance Y. Now that here is 30, the angle that also should be 30. Now let's, look, let's now find the distance, let's compare distances Y and 20. For this triangle, this Y is halfway between the longest side, while this side is the adjacent. So we're going to combine adjacent over hypotenuse. That's going to give us cos 30. So y now becomes 20 cos 30. And cos 30 is 0 0.8660. So y now give us around 1.732 centimeter. So this is the distance from here to the end. So the moment of the force about the point B becomes the force, which is 10 Newton, multiplied by the distance measured at 9 degrees to the point B, which is um, 1.732, of course, compared to meters. So that's our unit. So when we apply this, we're going to get 17.32 Newton meter. So this is the moment of the force 10 Newton above the point B. And we are also for us to find the difference with the moment of the force 10 Newton about the point B and also about the point C. So we are going to the moment of the force 10 Newton about the point B. Let's find the moment of this force about this point C. Unfortunately for us, this force is already making 90 degrees to the line of action to, the, to this point C. So we're going to find the distance also here. Now, if we complete this into a full rectangle, you see that. This distance and this distance are equal. So this place is y because opposite sides of rectangles are of rectangle is are equal. This place is y. Y. This place is also y. So the distance from A to C, the point of action of the force, is of the same 17 point. Uh, sorry, 1.732 centimeter. So also moment. About the point C, we see the force times the distance. Very glad to see that it's the same over 100. So it's the same value, which is going to give us the same 17.32 Newton meter. So they have equal distances. Equal, this distance and this are equal. So the moment of this force, 10 Newton taking off to the point B, is 17.32 Newton meter. We want to the same force to the point C is the same, same 17.3 because the distances, opposite sides of rectangle are equal to each other. 
and we are out to find the difference between these two moments. The difference is going to be 17.32 for this one minus the same 17.32, and that will give us zero. For the moments are equal to each. So go through our work as we round off for today's class. Thank you for viewing our channel and stay with us. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please try to subscribe by tapping on the bell, the subscription bell or the subscription icon. Uh, you find it under underneath the profile picture or under the, the channel's name Best Science Brand. You tap on it once so you can be getting our videos from time to time. In our next class, we're going to be looking at problems or harder problems or moments that involve double pipe system. Double pipe system, a system of this nature where you have maybe you have a body and they have a pivot and that pivot. You have two different reactions. R1, maybe R2. So that's the for those in doing physics in their high institution, that is FSCA University. So look at the double pipe people system in the next class. So stay connected to the channel, invite friends and share videos. Wish you the best of luck.